Formally, the enumeration phase follows the scanning phase in the ethical hacking cycle. In this phase, we usually query the identified services for further information, <coughs> which may help us to conduct further attacks against the host. Information we are usually looking for is usernames, open SMB shares, uh, Windows version numbers, anonymous FTP servers, and probably some information we can gain from SNMP version 1, like running processes, etc. But we should also expand our understanding of enumeration to phases like privilege escalation. Um, in this phase, we will then enumerate a local, the local configuration of a host, um, like outdated installed software or misconfigurations, which will help us to elevate our privileges to root, administrator or even system. During several black box penetration testing engagements, cap capture the flags and some practical certifications uh, under time constraints, I realized that enumeration is one of the key success factors. In order to get a first foothold or low privilege access to a system, uh, you have to be able to identify vulnerabilities in services quickly. So besides knowing different scanning techniques, uh, you should also familiarize yourself early with a good understanding of enumeration. I would also advise you to take good notes in the whole process. After the scanning phase, make yourself a game plan um, on how to proceed with enumerating different services. Prioritize what services you enumerate, and I will come this to uh, come back to this a bit later in this video again. Document the outcomes and check of what you already did in order to prevent double work. And also, it's not so much about knowing the tools, but rather to have a good systematic approach. I'm an experienced pen tester and ethical hacking instructor, so I knew many of the, of the concepts before having taken the CEH. But what I've learned is that enumeration is not so much about the selection knowledge of the tools, uh, but rather having a good fundamental understanding of the steps to take and how good a fluid documentation is during this whole process. Enumeration also means validation of findings, so you can quickly identify rabbit holes or dead ends. So, actually the CEH helped me a lot with optimizing my workflow during pen testing and in preparation for other certifications, like the CPEN. Talking about enumeration, pen testers, red teams and ethical hackers naturally first come to mind. Of course, they should be able to know uh, the steps to perform an effective and efficient enumeration in a time constrained situation like a pen test engagement. But also, blue teams, SOC analysts, and network defenders should be aware of that phase of the hacking cycle. Enumeration leaves tracks in log files, especially the usage of certain tools. Knowing what to look for may help these teams to quickly identify an incident and react to it in a timely fashion. Having experience with these offensive techniques may also help them to reduce the attack surface by disabling unsafe configuration or old protocols like SNMP version 1. So first you should get familiar with the enumeration phase and what services you can enumerate. Web servers, I would definitely say for last. That's because they have the widest, the widest surface to enumerate. So it would have been a waste of time when you suddenly realize that you spent three hours enumerating the web server or the web application when the way into the server was something like an obvious SMB vulnerability like Eternal Blue. <clears throat> In order to be efficient, you should use an automated approach when doing enumeration. Um, for example, you can start by using um, the aggressive or dash A switch uh, when using the MAP scan. 
This will not only enumerate the version of the services and the operating system, it will also run a set of enumeration scripts automatically. And there are some other scripts that also come packed with Nmap, which are very useful, like http-enum, for example, which searches for hidden content on a web server. And talking about hidden content on a web server, make sure that you use a good word list while brute forcing directories. And not only search for unindexed folders, but also use the word list to find certain extensions uh, or so files with certain extensions like .php, .cgi, .bak, etc. The brute forcing scripts have parameters for that. So you can optimize the search. For example, it would not make sense to search for an .asp file on an Apache web server. In certain situations, there are specialized scripts available. For example, if you have found a WordPress installation. WP scan is a script, is a script which enumerates, enumerates this CMS for outdated plugins or themes and also possible usernames. When it has identified usernames, it can also brute force these when you provide a good word list. Also, again, uh, the choice of word list uh, is a success factor here. There are also some kind of semi-automated general enumeration scripts available, which make your life a lot easier because they automatically do the work on an inference basis. Again, please also keep in mind that enumeration is also key when looking for local misconfigurations and outdated software. So when you get a first foothold, make sure you are running some kind of host-based audit scripts, which are also freely available on the internet. Uh, a quick word of warning though, um, these scripts will mostly only show you possible attack vectors. You will have to manually check and exploit them. And as a last tip, from my experience as an instructor, most students need to get familiar with the process itself and this can be only done by practice. Do as many capture the flags as you can, do some iLabs and in, in a short time, it will come second nature to you to identify certain ways into machines or privilege escalation vectors. So keep on hacking. Thanks for watching.